tradition that we've carried on here since the church was founded in 1880. This uh, Christmas tree tradition was brought over from the old country and uh, the, my grandparents came over here in the 1880s and, and they founded the church. And uh, they carried on this tradition of the Christmas tree, and which came actually from the old country. And I would imagine that uh, every year there's been a Christmas tree since 1880 up till the present time, which I guess roughly figures out to about 115 trees that have been danced around by former Danes. And of course we have, we're not all Danes anymore, we've kind of gotten mixed up, which is good, and there are other nationalities involved, but people that come in from other nationalities love this tradition. young people were always in charge of the Christmas tree and we had candles on the first trees and sometimes they were about as tall as the ceiling here and there would be young people standing with long poles with wet cloths to see that we didn't catch fire you know it's so it's uh, interesting to see how things change down through the years um, I think electricity probably came out here to Kronberg in about 19, I'd say between 1915 and 1920, somewhere in there, when they first had electricity here. My father sometimes, they had carbide lights, and he would have to be in charge. They had some sort of a tank where they pumped air into it, to, so they'd have lights there. And he told one time they pumped too much air into it. Uh, and one it of the fond memories explode. I have of, of this Christmas tree was actually gathering the greens. We usually went the weekend before to gather the greens and we'd take the saws and the trailers and, and a group of us would go out and, and gather a tree. And of course, it was never big enough out in the outdoors. Uh, we've kind of shrunk them over the years, but we never were happy unless we brought one in that touched the rafters and they would tilt down and we'd try to put that star on the very top of it and it wouldn't work so we'd have to cut a little bit off the bottom. I do remember once when we were gathering that we did have a star that tilted down like this because it was right up against the rafters. So we, uh, we really enjoyed that and that's become traditional too. The kids go out and, and get it, bring it back and decorate it, um, usually have some kind of fellowship, a meal. Uh, good time shared when they're when they're decorating it with lights. To dance with, uh, what would we call it? Music. We had to sing with our folk dances uh, years ago, but finally, in about the late 40s, we finally could use the piano and records and so on. Um, I was thinking when you were talking about the hall, didn't something go on up here and somebody controlled the electricity? So <laughs> he didn't like what was going on up here, so he shut off the power, so it got all completely dark. <laughs> some, some interesting. In, with uh, this particular night, particularly the second day of Christmas on December 26th, we've been celebrating that for forever, I believe, and we started um, 
helping with the uh, mixers and the folk dances way back in 1956 and uh, used various means of, uh, of uh, the equipment here. Some was good and some was bad and yeah, we finally have our own really system now. The Happy Danes and uh, we were more liberal with dancing and, and this sort of thing. Some of the some of our neighboring were more of the conservative uh, group, our neighboring church south of here, which was a little different. They had a little different background than we did. But we, uh, we couldn't really see too much wrong from the Christian standpoint as far as dancing. We felt like uh, we're kind of from the, I don't know if too many people know about uh, theologian Grundvik. He was a man that, uh, of, from Denmark who thought that that uh, Christianity should be in all of life, whether it's dancing, playing cards, or what. I mean, we if we have this in our minds, why we uh, it'll be it'll be of a higher Reverend standard. Morris talked today. a lot about the history of uh, Kronberg Church, and uh, as I've studied and researched some of the history of of the church, the Happy Danes versus the Holy Danes is traced back a lot farther than even here in Hamilton County. Uh, if you go clear back into Denmark, where most of the immigrants came from that settled in this particular area, the, uh, the church was split there also. There were those who were quite pious. It was referred to as intermission, and they didn't believe in the dancing or the singing that we do at all. And then there were those who followed the theological teachings of N.F.S. Grundtvig, whom Elmer mentioned. And Dolores talked about how he, he liked to build and, and develop the entire person uh, rather than just the soul. The physical part of the person, the physical element of the person was important too. And that's why there were the, the gymnastics, uh, the meets, the, simply the practices that took place here in this building. And I think Kronberg Danes have always been awfully proud of their happy Dane traditions. And I think you could see that as we danced around the tree tonight. Um, Dolores has played for us for years, and, and we start with, with truly religious songs. And you could see, uh, I, I think, as the, as the circles wound up to Silent Night, and everybody stood very piously during that. And then the happy Danes came out in us as we began singing some of the more joyous modern songs, uh, Christmas songs that we all know and, and love today. And then, of course, as, as we ended up with the, with the Danish song, New Havi Yul again, which talks about now we have Christmas again, now we have Christmas again, Christmas lasts until Easter. And it started quite slow and somber and developed through the joy and excitement as we think about what Christmas is all about. Gentlemen on the left, right, 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 gentlemen on the left, right,